Take over, Lord. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Take over. All other gods, they are the works 
hearts of men. You are the most I call. There is none like you. Every other God. They are the works of men. You are the only God. There is none like you. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. My Savior, I have confidence in you. Any time and any day, I have confidence in you. Jehovah, Jesus, Jesus, you are a miracle working God, Savior, Savior. You are a miracle working God, Jesus, Jesus. You are a miracle working God, Savior, Savior. You are a miracle working God. 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 All men may fail, but you will never fail. You are a miracle working God. All men may fail, but you will never fail. You are a miracle working God, Jesus, Jesus. You are a miracle working God, Savior, Savior. You are a miracle working God. Thank you for joining. Today, I'm just here to give a testimony of the goodness of God. A testimony of the goodness of God. So a week or so ago, yeah, I think it's a week now, almost a week. Um, everything was okay, you know, the way you just take things for granted. You wake up in the morning. You pray, yes, but you don't really pay attention to the things that you should be grateful for. You're just minding, basically going, going about your business, praying, reading the Bible, doing your best to live right. So, that was me a week or so ago. And... I got too comfortable in my routine, going to work, back home, other things that I was doing. So I was just like, so casual about life. I didn't really think, I was just busy basically, busy with work, busy at home, busy with different things. And I forgot to thank God for the, the things that seem so minor, I forgot to thank God for good health. So it was just a normal day I came from work. But all of a sudden, that evening when I was going, I was coming from work, I believe it was, I think Friday last week, Thursday last week. That evening when I was coming from work, 
I just started feeling this pain on my foot. And I thought, oh, maybe I've just hit my foot on something. Or maybe I've just stepped. You know, there's sometimes you're walking and you, you, your leg turns a certain way. Just a, just a normal, you know, you don't think much about it. It's, it's normal. It's, these things happen. Just like where you can stab your foot on a, on a stool or a table, a, a table, a chair. You know, you don't think much about it. So in my mind, I was like, ah, ah, this, I, just, I didn't even focus on it, to be honest. Until the next morning, on Friday, when I woke up and was like, um, why is my foot, my, my toe, my left toe, why is it swollen? And why is my foot, why does it not look right? My left foot does not look right compared to my right foot. And I was like, ah, oh, this is odd. This is very odd. So... I decided, let me, it, it was it was odd because I couldn't even step down, you know, the way your your toe is swollen such that when you step down flat, you feel pain. So I was like, uh, there's no way I can go to work like this. Let me just go to hospital quick and see what is happening. So I rushed to the hospital because I still had to go to work. I remember I was like, this is not serious. I just go to hospital, go to, go then go straight to work from there. So I called my, my boss and I told her, about the incident that I'm passing by the hospital, but I'll be, I'll be at work later on. So I went to hospital only for me to get there. And long story short, the doctors decided to do some tests and some, some things that the doctor was suggesting are things that just, just don't make sense. And when he was saying, was saying it, I was like, uh, there's no, you know, there you just start praying inside yourself i was like holy ghost fire that's not my portion that's not my portion there's no way that that's i have that condition so he decided he told me we will do some tests and we'll see if that's the condition that you have because this is a common sign of that my mind was like holy ghost fire this is not my portion there's no way i'm starting to get some some conditions at such a young age so i i waited for the tests the test came, at least it was negative from what he was thinking, only for him to start telling me afterwards that that he would have been surprised if I would have been found with that condition because it's mostly a condition for older people. So, uh, and for people who are not, um, there's a certain diet that he was saying that you shouldn't, you shouldn't eat too much. He was basically saying don't eat too much meat, don't, you know, people who eat too much meat and they drink, they also drink alcohol a lot. So I, I don't want to mention the name, but I believe I know you have a hint of what he was suggesting. So um, fortunately, the result came back negative. But now since um, he told me, see, because of the, the way I was describing the pain and everything, he said, even if we go for a, 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 an ultrasound, um, an x-ray, nothing much will be seen. So he just gave me some medicine and some something to apply and i went back to work so i thought it would be over like the day or the next day or so only for me to be surprised by the next day the pain is still there in fact i couldn't even walk straight i was limping while at work and the nature of my work requires me to move around a lot because i interact with different people a lot so there's no way i can sit down my the whole day so i was in constant pain moving around but trying to put up a brave, a brave face. Fortunately, I was able to, now that was on Monday. Monday, I, the medication, oh, Sunday, sorry. Saturday, it, it cooled down with the medication and the, the water was rubbing. But Sunday, I'm walking up and the leg seems more swollen than before. So I'm like, okay, this thing now, it's clearly not a medical thing. This is clearly spiritual. This is clearly an attack. Because, and deep now, deep down at the back of my mind, I knew this was a spiritual attack. I just didn't want to acknowledge it. You know, the way you, you don't want to say that everything is the devil. And so in my mind, I was like, ah, this thing will just, it will heal. But now when I woke up on Sunday with my legs swollen even more than how, how it was on Friday, I was like, okay, I think I need to go back to the hospital and get the test, the the what do you call it, the x-ray done, so that in case there's anything that's hidden that I've not seen, I can be now more intentional about, I can be more specific about, about what I'm praying about. So you see how, um, 
how sometimes how deceptive the enemy is. So I, I was just trying to tell myself, you know, the Holy Spirit was just trying to tell me, but you know, I can, if you, if you just pray, I can heal you. You don't really have to, to go to hospital and all that. But in my mind, I was like, uh, this is just a waste of time. It's inconveniencing. I need to, I need to be at work tomorrow. Now that was on Sunday. I need to be at work on Monday. There's no way I'm going to at work when I'm in this court. So you see, my faith was a bit shaky. Yes, my faith was shaky. So I went to hospital. They did the tests. And guess what? Nothing was found. So you see, this whole thing, the Holy Spirit is just like, you see, I told you this is, you can just pray and I will heal you. You don't need to do all that. So I went to hospital. I was given the medication and the, some some antibiotics to help curb it down. And they told me that if it, if it persists beyond the medication, now I have to go and do some more tests to see if it's a deeper problem. So this whole time I'm like, Am I really entertaining that I might, I might have, I might have, uh, the Holy Spirit is telling me, are you really entertaining that this thing might be deeper than you think? You know the problem, you know this is a spiritual attack, but why are you not, uh, what's happening? Why are you not believing? What's happening? So I now started realizing that lately I've been slacking. I've been reading my Bible, but lately I've been slacking with praying and delivering the messages that God has been giving me. Not because I don't want to, but because of being busy at work and other things. So, you know, you get distracted and you don't, God tells you to do something and to give a message, maybe you delay. Slowly by slowly, it starts creating room for open doors for the enemy to attack you. So as I was contemplating and thinking about how I've taken the medication and the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to me and tell me, you know, this is all you can pray and nothing can, and you'll be healed and you don't need to do all this. That's when I started realizing, oh, so I've been slacking with my time with God, with reading, reading the Bible, I've been reading, but it's not been very, I've not been very focused. You know, you read, you, you say you're reading, but... The word is not sinking as deep. You're not very intentional as you should be. Because one thing I've come to realize is that time in the presence of God should be valued. It shouldn't be like a chore, something that you do just to tick off a, a check mark to say that, that, you did, that you did something. And this was a very hard uh, message for the Holy Spirit, for God to give me. And I just started repenting and asking God for mercy, asking him to forgive me for the distractions, for how I become so busy that I'm, I'm, I'm not spending as much intentional time as I used to a couple of, some time back. And I went about my, my work at job, at work every day. And slowly by slowly, guess what? Jesus started healing me. Slowly I started noting, noticing all oh, the, the, the foot, the swelling is subsiding, the pain when I walk is subsiding. And as of today, I'm here to testify that I'm now healed. I can walk without limping. The pain on the toe is there slightly, very slightly. I barely feel it when I step down. But I'm here to testify that Jesus healed me. Despite it having to come in such a heavy way, like a wake-up call that you see when you don't spend time with me as much as you should, when you allow distractions to take my time with you away from you, when you allow anything to be above me, it it creates room for you to be attacked. Naturally, the enemy will always be attacking us, always fighting us, always trying to bring us down. But when you're not dwelling in the shelter of the Most High, when you're not dwelling in that secret place 
continuously and as the spirit of god is leading you as the spirit of god is nudging you constantly telling you spend time with me read read this chapter sometimes yeah, a, a verse comes to mind and you are and when a verse comes to mind that's the, the holy spirit telling you to go and read it spend time in that one sometimes a song Sometimes it can be a preaching that you heard somewhere but you didn't get a chance to listen to the whole of it. God speaks in very many ways. So the more disobedient you are to not listening to his voice, the more detached you become, the more distracted you become and slowly by slowly doors start opening for attacks. Attacks that if you're not careful they could become so heavy and costly. You see for me it became so costly that it was it manifested physically with my with my with my foot and it's so interesting that a couple of a week or so before that before I, I got sick I had started noticing how people are constantly getting accidents on their feet either a road accident or maybe they slipped and fell or they broke their feet and i was discussing with someone and i was telling them we need to pray against this thing that is block that is attacking people's feet it's like the enemy is trying to make people stagnant i literally said that like a week before this my own case started so when it started i was like huh the devil is not even unique i'm not even going to say this is the devil maybe i just slipped that's why i was so i was so um trying to not quote and quote i was trying to not to make it spiritual but i didn't want to acknowledge that it is spiritual because everything is spiritual that's why i was going to hospital and i was so quick to go to hospital because naturally my faith has been boosted beyond that and i would pray and i would believe that god would heal me in most cases i pray and i, I usually leave it to god and he heals me through the deliverance videos my of my apostle sometimes through my own prayers sometimes through other people's pray praying for me so you see it was very odd for me to just rush to the hospital so fast though i'm grateful the medication helped but i believe it was mainly jesus who made the healing faster who made it was like a lesson a statement that you see what happens it's not to say that when you don't spend time with god you get attacked that's when you get attacked you always the enemy is always attacking it's only that you don't notice or you don't want to acknowledge it he's always attacking you plotting against you planning evil against you that's who he is wicked always planning to steal to kill and destroy anything that is working in our lives so tell me would it really would it you can't really say that if you don't spend time with jesus that that's when you get attacked you're always attacked all the time but now the problem is when you don't spend time with jesus the room the attacks are more pronounced you feel them more when you're with jesus those attacks the, you you barely notice them or even if you notice them because of his help because of his strength because of always dwelling in his presence they don't become as important to you as they do when you're not spending time with him when you're not spending time with him it's like you're alone it's like a i don't know which illustration i can give it's like a child a child look at the way a child behaves if a child like a maybe a toddler think of a toddler three years old two years old playing around in the house and their mother is there and maybe they accidentally slip and fall i'm telling you the way they will cry and cry and try to attract all their attention because their mother or their guardian is there and the guardian naturally will hold them and want to soothe them and tell them it's okay don't worry you'll feel better but if the mother wasn't there and it was fellow her fellow playmates of the child when they fall it will be so quick for them to they'll get up probably even ignore and pretend nothing happened 
So you see, the more, how do I put it? The more intimate you are with Jesus, the more comfortable you can be in his presence such that you'll be so comfortable in his presence that as the way that child was so wanted the attention of the mother when they fell, they knew they would get the attention. That's why the most children usually cause such drama when the parents are around. But when other people are around, they turn it down. They don't want to be seen a certain way. It's like not, it's, it's like an instinct. So that comfort, that vulnerability, it will be easy for you to go to God with anything, knowing that he will take care of it. You won't have to hide whatever you're going through. You won't have to pretend it didn't happen. You won't try to, you won't need to have to cover it up. Instead, you'll be comfortable to be in the presence of God, knowing that he will take care of you. And so even when all these other bigger things come your way, because of that secret place, that place of comfort, that place of him soothing you and taking care of you. Nothing will faze you. Nothing will harm you. You'll still be feeling that comfort, that safety. The child feels when the parent is around. That's how you will feel. But when you're away from God's presence, that's when, in case you fall, it will be easy to cover up and you're trying to Show that, that nothing happened. It's not that big of a deal. When deep down you know it hurts. When deep down you know that you're sinking deeper and deeper into whatever trouble you found yourself into. In whatever trouble the enemy has put you in. So I don't even know how I've come to this message. But my message, my message today... My message in a test in my testimony is that run to that secret place. Run to that secret place. Jesus. And all attacks. Attacks will come. We are told in Psalms. I believe 39 if I'm not wrong. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not 39, it's Psalms 34. Psalms 34 verse 19. Psalms 34 verse 19, the NLT version. It says, The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to, the rest, to their rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. When you read the New King James Version, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So you see, the afflictions will come. You'll go through the troubles. But when you're with Jesus, it's safer. It's easier to maneuver. It's The, the effect is not felt as much as when you are separated from him or when you're distracted by other things. Yeah, so that's my, my message stroke testimony for today. That Jesus healed me. And I'm so grateful. And in the healing, he also taught me a very powerful message about the importance of dwelling in that secret place. That secret place may be costly. It may costly your, cost you your sleep. It may make you uncomfortable because in that secret place you will realize your weaknesses. You see that prayer that David prayed in Psalms 51 that create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a loyal spirit. That prayer wasn't just a random prayer. That is a very heavy prayer. That Lord create in me a clean heart. 
renew a loyal spirit within me. When you ask God to create in you a clean heart, it will be painful. It will be costly because naturally we are prone to be stubborn. We are prone to want our own way. But when Jesus starts work, starts working on you, it will cost you your stubbornness. It will cost you your surrender. You will have to let go and let him lead you. You will have to let go and accept whatever correction is giving you. And actually work to be to be better. So, so that's the message I have for today. And before I end, I just want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you don't know who, Je- who Jesus is. You've had people talking about him. But you don't really know much about him. You, maybe you've even grown up in a Christian home, but you don't really have a personal relationship with him. I want to give you an opportunity to get to know him for yourself. And the first step is by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. By accepting him as your Lord and Savior. So if you're ready, just say this prayer after me. Father Lord, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me on the cross of Calvary so that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to serve you forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now put your right hand on your chest and declare that you are saved. Declare that you will go and sin no more. Lord, pour out your spirit on your children like you did for me, Lord. Fill them afresh. Fill them with your love. Fill them with a desire to know you more. Fill them with a desire to love just like you loved us, Lord. Fill us with a desire to love like you loved us. Take over our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies. Take over every part of us and give us the willingness to surrender and to walk in your will. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining. Now that you've said this prayer, spend time in the word of God. Read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts of the Apostles. Read about Jesus. Spend time in his presence and you will not regret it. He will reveal himself to you and you will know him for yourself. That secret place will be such a heaven, a safe place to be. If only you would desire to to allow Jesus to work on you. It's the best place you can be. Thank you for joining. See you next time. Have a lovely night or day depending on where you're watching from. See you soon. Bye-bye.